Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to our soon-to-be farm, Cornucopia Orchards, and our self-built house in progress here in the beautiful and chilly Pacific Northwest. It feels like one day it was summer, the next day. The trees said it was fall and suddenly the leaves are all gone and now it's winter. Wait, how is it almost Christmas? Today we're headed inside the house to forge ahead with building some HVAC boxes for plenums and returns. So when we first built the frame up on this house, I definitely misread something in the plans and just having gained experience since then and I realized that just doesn't make sense. So we're cutting up some additional boards because I basically ran ourselves completely out of 2x12 and 2x10 scrap even working the curtain hangers around windows and you know some of the other blocking in the house. I'll show you in a second here where it is all going but it just makes sense and boy do I feel silly not having had this installed from the beginning. If I take you way back to when we were doing our first floor, literally doing the first floor's floor, you will remember or go back and see that there were some of these little blocking pieces, these cross braces that we put in around the outside rim connecting the rim joist to the first interior joist at about a four foot on center spacing. I had seen that and I had read that in the engineering and thought that only applied to the first floor. It does not. And <laughs> I don't know why it didn't make sense to me when we're doing the framing for the second floor and the attic um, that, that those would not be there or what the brain process was, but they're supposed to be there. So I'm adding them in now. Something to keep in mind about this wood that's already installed in the house, it is dimensionally stable. It cooked for the whole summer and is dry. <sighs> These pieces are close to dry, not quite. Two by tens, I was able to find some older boards way back at the back of the stack. They do not come kiln dried, at least in the store where I was shopping. And I didn't see any in the other big box store in the area. The 2x12s definitely don't come kiln dried, so there's a probability that I'll have to shave the 2x12s because they were fairly wet still, like notably heavier than these 2x10s. It went in just fine on this side, but then on this side over here, you'll note that we have, uh, I mean, that's more than an eighth. That's 3 16 I would say, and it's hard to tell, but it is, I can feel that it is flush to the wood up above. So I'm going to I'm going to probably end up having to shim here or or shave this. And it'll probably be on every one of these that we install and the 2x12s will be worse. On these 2x10s, I'm just doing three nails, could fit four, but about every 2 inches a nail and then one nail, two nails and a nail up through the bottom. And I probably will do like I did everywhere else if I can get in there and do it one down and one down, which is what they called for elsewhere in the building whenever that same circumstance, you know, whenever you butt into the wall. So here's two blocks where I, I had to cut out a notch and a notch. <sighs> There's pipe going through right next to that one, right through that one where I'm gonna put it up. And that one has a little electrical. That's totally fine. That notching is hardly anything that's within the standards that might get me in trouble depending on the inspector you can probably tell that it's a little bit more than a third but we'll just have to wait and see what they say um not really sure i could get any better than that so here's what the box is going to look like remembering that we have that piece that's already there it's got a flat and then it comes up so this will lap to that and then this is where that's going to sit within there and you can see without the ribs and the thicker gauge of, you know, the, the pre-built trunks like those over there, this guy right here has a little bit of a flop in the middle. That's the technical term, flop. So I'm going to address that because um, I, I will have some supports along the sides. And I'm going to use these extra pieces of LP smart side trim, you know, cut off ends that are too short for me to use for literally anything else that I can think of now. 
Uh, they're an inch wide, so they're good to go on adding pretty good support. And I also have a concern that, you know, just where anything ever to, you know, as I'm doing the cabinet work above this, you know, if, if I drop something or whatever, I don't want to just smash through that and then have to rework it. So when I go to install this, I think we're going to build this around with two by four. I will probably put one board that's going to come back and connect back into this one on the back end. And that is part of why we're gonna hold off on installing this front piece. All right, that was a bad idea. I uh, pretty much kind of got it all assembled and then was like, how am I gonna get these wood pieces in? And on the front, this doesn't go out past the two by fours of the wall. I have to have something run out there. So those will probably end up being built on the outside. the little structure I built inside of there a little bit more up close now and there's nothing really supporting this end this is the bottom so it shouldn't need <laughs> supports on the floor and as so long as that goes back where it came from out of that hole upstairs um, which it should we should be good to go there this got a little beat up because I was trying to get this folder this corner to fold a little bit better it was too high and I forgot there was nothing underneath here and I started to try and force it over and I mean, you can see there's no board there, so it just bent instead. But I'm, I'm pleased with this. We're gonna go get it put in. Hmm, delicious. So that's all installed. Let's take a peek inside. This corner, I couldn't see that it was getting caught. I thought I'd fixed it, and I think I'd, I'd unfixed it when I got that corner uncaught. And it started to crunch that thing up. So a little bit bent right there. You can see that roundedness, but it's down now. And it should be ready to install from below, which means now only thing that's left on this little old guy here is this front frame and then eventually of course we'll you know put in cabinetry above this however high up uh casey wants me to go i don't know whether she's going to want this to be like drawer 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 cabinet tops or what we'll see when we get way into the future so this is a almost four foot plenum and i'm going to be using it for two things this section is going to go on top as our supply plenum and this section is going to become a small box that's going below the floor it's going to be connected into via a 16 by 8 um that's going to come down through the floor and that's currently my my plan for getting this guy all of these here are the different connections that I have going in under the floor and that one's going to be out the bottom with an angle um, just allowed me to reduce the amount of box that was needed so I have a couple of things that I have to get clarifications on from the uh, county 
Um, Oregon changed the mechanical code in 2021 for the 2022 year. And I think I understand the um, requirements for ductwork beneath the house. Um, but I want to make sure that I have a good grasp. Uh, we just got so many beams. <laughs> and they were very um, hesitant to allow us to um, run through the blocking on the main floor. Like they... they they tried to discourage me from doing that. And in order to avoid doing that and meet the other requirements in the crawl space, um, I, I mean, essentially I've got these massive R19 surrounded ducts that are hanging below the beams in the crawl space and not tucked up nicely against, you know, the, the, the house's duct. So I've, I've got to just ask the question and then see if I can get somebody to answer. So hopefully they give me a call back and I can get that figured out. So if they're going to make me have R45,000 in the crawl space, I'll limit the ducts as best I can. Um, the laundry room, there's two in the kitchen. There's one in the dining area here, one in the living room, and then one in the hall. And really, you know, that's about as as much as I can limit, you know, this just not ideal. Well, it's a bit of a brighter than normal day outside for this time of year and certainly for the past little while, but it does not mean that I am brighter inside. In fact, I feel rather stupid. I spoke with the county yesterday and got some clarification on a couple of things and realized slash discovered that I had completely misunderstood the role of tapes in HVAC. And maybe this is something where I had misunderstood, but at the prior two houses that we've remodeled, both times we've had a professional contractor, different contractors, come in, replace the main unit, and some of the immediately adjacent uh, HVAC, mostly metal, because I didn't want to have to work that much with metal. With the, you know, this, this is newer to me. And I've mostly dealt with flex duct in the past. When I went back on the first job, I had to rip something that they had done out and there was no mastic. And I'm pretty confident, and this, this is years ago now, mind you, so, it's on me, but I'm pretty confident that, that that HVAC installer had told me he didn't really believe in using mastic. He didn't feel it was as good as the newer tapes. Mea culpa, um, I did not do my own research on this. Okay, so as I said, this is newer to me and the county basically said, no, you're, you're misunderstanding. Go back and read the, the code again, much more closely. So they, gave me one page to reference and it specifically said tapes are not to be used as sealant. And there's a different phrase, but it's, I think when you read it a couple of times, eventually it gets to be a little bit more clear what's going on in the code itself. And what the code says is that you can use tapes. You just can't use them as sealant. So you need to be using a liquid sealant certified to, I believe it's 181B-M, um, or a mastic sealant, but tape is not a sealant anymore per code. And the reason that they gave me is that they were finding that a lot of tape jobs had pinholes where air was escaping. And you really don't want that, especially if what you're trying to do is have a nice tight plenum. There's not a lot of pressure on HVAC systems. It's not like, you know, a compressor, but there is some, and you want the air to go where you're trying to get it to go. And everything about code now, and everything that our state at least has been trying to do in adopting and modifying code is about tightness for the building envelope, tightness for the HVAC systems, you know, no air coming in except where you tell it to come in and then force it through a filtration system. And if you think about Oregon and what's been happening the last five years, 
there have been intense wildfires and very poor air quality. And that I suppose makes sense. You know, you want air that is filtered. You do not want air getting into your homes. That's going to cause people to get sick. So what I have with me right now, what I just did is uh, I'm prepping to um, caulk everything that I can. And I, and I say caulk, but not a mastic is a liquid sealant, but don't just think you can use any old caulk. This I picked up from Lowe's or from Depot and I usually shop at Lowe's. So I was reminded again today why it is that I don't typically shop at Depot. I went to pick up a bunch of eight by 14 and eight by 16 um, duct, you know, in half sections. And yesterday, or day before yesterday, the, the gal I'd called had assured me that it should be there by yesterday. And so for sure, I thought today, because my tracking number with FedEx showed zero activity since the label was created. So I went in to pick them up and nope, not there, you know, and I kind of sat and looked at the gal like, well, are, are you going to find out, you know, what's going on and why it's not here? It's, it's 10 days late now. I know it's the season for things to be shipped, but you know, that that's something that you guys need to be figuring out. If I'd wanted to have to deal with it, I wouldn't have bought it from you. I would have bought it from Amazon. <laughs> Great customer service there. Not her problem. You know, hurry up, get out of the line. You know, there's more people waiting, not my problem. You know, and I was, I was not pleased with that. And I don't feel like there's been any effort made any of the times that I've been into that store recently. So, you know, if, if you work for Home Depot, by all means, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you about it. But um, I've had great experiences with them in the in the past. But by at this point, you know, after remodeling two houses using them, it's the distant past. Long and short of it is, I in talking with the guy from the county, he said, if there's anything that you need to rip open and redo because you can't get mastic inside of it or on the outside yet, you need to do that. And anything that you can seal from the inside, if you can't see it when they come to inspect, make sure you have a picture or video. So come along with me here as we seal what we have exposed of the inside of this one. And um, then we're gonna go ahead and move on from there. Going forward, I will seal the outside where it makes sense and the inside with a video or a picture where it makes sense to me. It does specifically say tapes are acceptable in some circumstances, your duct boots or your takeoff collars where you're transitioning from metal to your flex duct. They want you to slide the interior tube over the collar and then uh, zip tie it or, or you know tighten the ring if you have a metal ring. Then you mastic around the end and then you pull the insulation and the outer sheath over that, and then you tape the flex to the metal. So it does specifically say you can't rely on tape on the interior connection. Setbacks aside, our little tree and our fox are about all we have room to do this year. But next year, we'll have a whole house to decorate as much as we want. We're all looking forward to the holidays, and we hope all of yours are filled with family, friends, good food, and a break from the busyness of the world. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.